So today we're we'll gonna be doing a versus video between the Rolex Gym Team Master 2 versus the Rolex No Day Mariner. So just like most of my versus videos, I'm not gonna give the specs of these watches because you can find them on various blog forums and websites. I'm just gonna give you a versus video based on my experience on wearing both of these. So obviously these two watches look very similar. They have bezels, black bezels, black faces, oyster bracelets, super oyster cases, and Mercedes hands, uh, maxi dial, etc, etc. But they do really wear differently when you actually spend a lot of time with each of these. At first I wasn't really sure uh, if I would find any difference in my experience wearing these watches when I initially uh, first purchased the GMT Master 2. But after wearing the GMT Master 2 for a few months and having worn the Submariner for over a year now, I can tell you that these are very two different watches. Aesthetically, these are very similar watches. However, how they function, how they wear, and how you interact with these watches are two completely different stuff. So, the No Day Submariner is obviously a very clean, symmetrical watch. That's one of the key selling points about this watch. There's nothing on the dial to distract you from reading the time easily. Unlike the GMT Master 2, which is more complicated in design, it looks busier, so there's more uh, distractions, I guess you can call it, from reading the time only. However, you do get more complications like the date and the GMT. So let's start off with the bezel. The bezel for the Submariner has a uh, 120 click unidirectional with very small precise clicks to do measurements while diving. The bezel also has markings on every 10 minutes and smaller markings from 0 to 15 minutes. Looking at the GMT Master 2, we have a bidirectional bezel which has a different feeling from the Submariner. It has like a ball bearing type of feel where it clicks but not the same click as the Submariner bezel. The function of the GMT bezel is to keep track of a third time zone. There are platinum fill numerals for every 2 until 24 and there is no loom pip like the Samariner does. So the bezels look similar because they are both black, ceramic, have platinum filled but they serve functions that are different and they also operate differently. Bidirectional, unidirectional. The case are both Super Oyster cases, so there isn't really much difference. They are both satin top with polished sides, as you can see. They both have the triple lock screw down crown, as indicated by the three dots on the crown. Same for this. However, the Submariner does have a 300 meter water resistance opposed to the 100 on the GMT Master 2. The GMT is an aviation piece. The Submariner is a diver's piece, so obviously the diver is going to have more water resistance. Moving on to the dial, we have a, again, clean, symmetrical design, no date, no complication aside from the hour, minute, and seconds hand. On the GMT Master 2, we have a busier dial. It has a date, a date bubble, and a green GMT hand, which I can show you. It's currently hidden by the uh, hour and minutes hand right there. So, four hands on the GMT, three on the Submariner. Makes the GMT more busier. Mariner a lot easier to read the time So while we have this unscrewed I might as well unscrew the Mariner to show you the difference in how you have to interact with these watches So you unscrew both of these and the only thing you have to do for the Mariner is set the time so we literally unscrew it You set the time Pop back in and screw it back in very simple very intuitive nothing else to do 
However, the GMT is more complicated than that. Pulling it out all the way, you do have the same time function. The GMT also moves along with it. However, this one does have a first and second position. First position, you control the hours hand, which is independent from all of the other hands. So the GMT Master 2 does not have a quick set function. So the date has to be quote unquote quick set by the operation of the hours hand moving around and around like that. As you can see. M. And obviously in the first position both of these have the winding capability which is extremely smooth. So due to the added amount of complications on the GMT Master 2 and the complexity of this, opposed to the simplicity and easy, uh, I guess, usability of the Node Ace Mariner, if I'm running late in the morning, I gravitate towards the Mariner because let's say both of these haven't been running for a while and they're both stopped, I only have to set the time for the Mariner. Unscrew, set the time, screw back on, I'm done, I can be out. GMT, on the other hand, a little bit more involved, have to set the time, date, and the GMT. Now, obviously, the date and the GMT are optional, but I'm just saying, there's a lot more to be done. The next major difference between these two pieces would be the bracelets. They are both oyster bracelets with oyster clasps. However, the finishing is different. We have polished center links for the GMT Master 2 and the all brushed finish for the Rolex Mariner. The brush bracelet makes the Rolex Mariner feel more of a sports watch. It's not as flashy. It can hide wear much better. As you can see by almost the immaculate looking condition of my bracelet. I've had this for over a year now and I do not baby my watches. The GMT on the other hand, with its center polish links, inherently renders it more uh, vulnerable to getting scratches. Though it's not picking up that easily or we can see it on the clasp yeah do not baby the watches I do wear them so I've experienced how vulnerable these polished bracelets get to scratches based on my uh, Datejust 2 that I used to own it also had polished center links and a polished center clasp which caused me to be more careful when I'm wearing that watch and also this watch in particular even though this is a sports watch. While wearing both of these, I am more careful with the GMT Master 2, more aware of my surroundings, making sure that I can reduce as much uh, surface scratches on the polished surfaces as possible, opposed to Submariner, where if I happen to do some desk diving, it won't really show up. So how that makes me feel about the GMT Master 2 is basically, this feels like my dressy Submariner in a sense because it's it's very similar looking to the Mariner. it's a very similar feel in terms of its aesthetics and how it wears on the wrist but I do have to take more things into consideration like the complications the more uh, complicated movement the busier dial busier bezel the polished bracelet just some things that you have to consider when you have a dress watch even though this is a sports watch now we can't forget about one of the main distinctions between these two watches which would be the clasp okay back here we both have the rolex crown and they both snap off like that and unlock just like that but the main difference is the uh, ability to make extensions to these so the GMT Master 2 has an extension system which uh, I was told many people don't really know about for some reason it has the easy link which is a half link that can come out just like that and it serves as a little micro extender for when your wrist uh, expands or contracts throughout the day and this is more than enough to accommodate any expansion based on the few months that I've had this watch for now. It's perfectly functional and it works great. However, this one is not 
as uh, capable as the system found on the Rolex Samarin bracelet. We have the legendary and the best bracelet in my opinion on the market, the Glide Lock system, which you snap out and you have the ability to just slide your way around to set the perfect position for your wrist. And it's not even a small increment, it is a large area you can work with. This is my favorite way of adjusting any type of bracelet on the go. It's so easy and it's so functional and practical. So once again, the JMT Master 2 feels like my dress watch and the Samariner feels like a sports watch. I have to be more careful with the JMT and I can be more carefree with the Samariner which makes me feel like these two watches are very different functionally and how they have to be considered when on the wrist. If I'm going out on the weekend to have some fun, you know, camping, beach, anything that is active, I will take the Samariner. It is more uh, suiting for the condition that it will be in, opposed to the GMT, where if I'm going out to a bar, class, lecture, somewhere more formal, wedding, I will take this piece because it is more flashy, more dressy feeling, has more complications, the busy dial, the busy bezel, just makes it look more complicated and feel like a dress watch for some reason. Now something I've been asked is, do I feel like it's reasonable to own both the GMT Mask 2 with the black bezel and the Rolex Mariner with the black bezel? I think it's perfectly fine. I'm actually really content with just these two pieces. I feel like you can have a collection with just these two. This one watch alone or this one watch alone could be a one watch collection. But having both of these, it feels like I have a complete collection, honestly. The No Date has the symmetrical, no-nonsense design, whereas the GMT has the complications that you could ever possibly need. I mean, the GMT and the Date are, I believe, some of the most useful complications. Let's say if this No Date was the Date Samariner, then it would be a little bit of a different story because you do have uh, more overlap between the two watches where both of them would have the date and both of them will be very similar. However, since this one has no complications aside from just from telling the time, it brings a completely different vibe and wearing experience. I mean, the No Date is just so unique in that it, it is very, very clean and symmetrical. So you have a balance between the simplicity of the No Date opposed to the complexity of the GMT Master 2 which makes them very suitable to be owned in the same collection in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think about these two watches. Which one would you prefer if you had the choice of picking one? Honestly, I couldn't really pick one. If I had to go based on pure sentimental value, I really don't know. This one has some attachment personally. This one is my other personally attached watch for various reasons so they are very very much up there in terms of their importance to me maybe it's just me but when i wear the no day mariner it feels like i'm on a day off i don't have to worry about what day it is i don't have to worry about what i'm doing that day i just have to worry about what's going on right now and that time opposed to when i wear the gmt master 2 i have more things that i have to be ahead of i need to know when what schedule i have that day what appointments what work i have to do it just feels like a completely different experience so if you found this video useful entertaining or enjoyable please make sure to smash that thumbs up button and if you want to see more content from me about watches please make sure to hit that subscribe button